Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It'll be a, probably a time in the near future where you're not building any bows. That'll never happen. Unless it's on recorded, I bet. That's pretty much now, damn near. Mm. I don't know. I built, I've built a few. No, I'm saying like not client work, you know, just whatever it is, hobbyist work. or. Um, I think I'll still... Uh, I'll still do a percentage of it. It's not much. It won't. It won't be like it was at all. I just. I don't have the time. I mean, just I kind can't. of keep your finger on the pulse, kind of thing. Yeah, I still think I'll do the, um, you know, like giveaways. Come build your bow with me. Oh, that yeah, kind of, of stuff. Which will some on some of it I won't record because it's going to get redundant. I mean, yeah. we're going to make the same. Like we're going to build ten bows or twelve bows, and uh, you know, Joe blows building it, and I'm teaching him how to do it, and it's way easier to do it when you're not recording it, and we can probably have a little bit more of a casually candid conversation and not be as concerned about what you're saying um but i also think it will get boring like if i just video all of them like the the original this year bow, bow giveaways which are still happening by the way um i'm not gonna record all of them i'm gonna record some of them so you guys get a an idea of what it looks like and what i'm doing and what the experience is like but i just don't understand why i would do the same no, thing. Oh, you can't record. Ten times over. Ten times over. No, I mean, I can. But I can you could kind of maybe get bits from each of them and create a master or something, <laughs> master video or whatever. Yeah. If you wanted. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could I could keep some of it and, mm -hmm. you know, make one compiled thing or something like that. But in general, I just, I don't, I don't see it. Like, I, I, I probably won't build a lot of bows anymore. I'll still That's build what some. I mean is like, people aren't going to come into the shop and say, oh, I'd like yeah. Josh to build me a bow. It's, okay. it's well, not going to be possible. I keep getting pulled in the direction of products anyway, um, whether they're mine or um, inquiries from other manufacturers on what they want to do and wanting me involved. So I'm willing to bet I just won't have the time. Like I'll have, I'll be yeah. helping, helping develop products and things like that in the long run. Um, which I, I've I've really enjoyed. I've done that a lot in my life, uh, but it was always, for the most part, personal. And I've always had conversations with manufacturers trying to get them to, hey, why aren't you doing it this way? Or how come you didn't do this? Or how come you didn't do that? Or why didn't you change this? You know, those sort of things. That's just my nature, right? So, um, and I've had involvement with that, but I think the involvement's going to be a lot more going forward. Um, so I just, I don't see me having a ton of time. I mean, I'm probably going to be doing stuff like this at least 30 hours a week. I'm going to be dealing with manufacturers at least 20 hours a week. I still have my own manufacturing products. That's going to take up five or 10 hours a week. I mean, I'm, I'm running out of hours in a week, right? Yeah. You know, you can only do so much and I can, I, I'm passionate and I love what I do and I really enjoy it. But at a certain point you run out of time and I still, I'm still in the shop at least, at least three hours out of every day. At least. So, you know, minimum five days a week, so minimum 15 hours there. At least three hours. Now, granted, it's usually when we're not open, getting things rolling, and some, some of it when we're open. But I would say my typical work week anymore, or since since early season hunting started, I'm probably only in the shop about three hours out of each day. But I'm there every day. Other than Mondays, I am there Monday from 7.30 till probably 1 to 2 doing fulfillment and i don't think that'll ever change or at least not this year because it helps me it helps me keep track of what's coming and going mm -hmm. and if you know if i have an item that we've been selling a lot of and then all of a sudden we're not selling or shipping any of it i'll know it because i'm watching the orders and I'm like where are these orders mm -hmm. you know so then it, it's like all right well who's running a sale or who was doing this promotion or why did this item stop keeps your you know, finger on the pulse it keeps my finger on the pulse better and um i, I am uniquely on the pulse um, in this industry for one reason or another just dumb luck in my life history i guess but i i've, I've usually really really good at what's going to sell what's not going to sell and what's going to be popular and what's going to be hard to get um, and i've been on top of that for a long time and done it relatively good so something to do with 40 years doing this or something like that mm, i don't know if you can technically say 40 um granted i was i don't think uh Ellen, Ellen and I can come for your dad anymore. Well, no, that's not that. It's, oh. that that's child. There's no child labor laws for a family. Well, I think that's they what our dads count. want us to believe. <laughs> no, I've I've looked it up. Oh, it doesn't you have? exist. Yeah. yeah, you can you can work your kid as much well, you as you want. It doesn't matter. Too bad, did you? No, I didn't want him involved. Um, if they expressed a lot of interest in being involved, that would be a different story. But I didn't hardly even talk about it. I didn't encourage it. I didn't discourage it, but I didn't encourage it. 
because I knew what it did to my relationship with my dad. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't great. And I, I wished I had more time with him that was positive. Um, and not to say it was all negative. It's just I, I would say up until 10 years before he died, we didn't have a very good relationship. I didn't want to spend time with him. And it was largely because working with him was hard. And I'll be the first to admit, I might be hard to work with. I might. Um, I'm, ag I'm aggressive. I'm high energy. I'm high speed. I work faster than anybody else. And I can be short when I'm doing that. So I could, I could see where my kids might not enjoy it. I mean, they might, they might look at it and strive for a greater ambitious effort, or they might hate my guts, and I, I don't want to risk it. Yeah, working with your family does one of two – family or spouse or close friends does one of two things. It either strengthens the relationship or puts a wedge in it. Yeah. Well, yeah. fortunately for me, the friends that I've had work for me knew me ahead of time. So they liked me for who I was already, So, and I, I was never portraying to be someone different. So that those have all worked out well. Anytime I've had a, a prior friend come to work for me, it's always been good. Um, and maintain relationships beyond when they're not there anymore, that sort of thing. But, And I like to think most people that work for me, we end up having a good friendship. But, you know, you're all, at the end of the day, you're always the uh, the boss. And the, there's always going to be some kind of a separation between the boss and the yeah. employees that aren't that never gets, you know, connected completely. Yeah, but you do have like. Uh, How are they going to hang out with you and bitch about you at the same time? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you do have kept like a family vibe to the shop. Yeah. Um, which ten years ago I always thought was like I was like, dude, that's a dumbass way to run a business. Like, it just doesn't it doesn't make sense. You don't have the boundaries. You don't you know big businesses don't do that. And now mm -hmm. as I've gotten older, I'm just like, I don't know. I think it's cool, and I think. Um, Particularly in the small business world, like small business, interesting term, but you know, locally owned businesses, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, it gives real character and personality to a business. I think, I think the better term is probably owner operated. Like the owner actually operates the business, like he's running the business. Normally, when you get into big businesses, the owner's not involved. I mean, they're they are, but they're not involved. There's so many everybody. layers of separation or yeah. whatever. Yeah, where the owner's still present enough to be to know each employee and yeah. involvement with each employee yeah anyway i think it gives real character to the business and um like if you were to walk into the bow rack tomorrow mm -hmm. you've you have you been there while they're operating yeah so like wayne and lisa will like argue with each other in front of customers and stuff yeah <laughs> and like it's a very it's a very family vibe it's a d definitely a different shop than yours but I now see as I've grown older, I'm like, I don't know, there's just a real character to that. There's a real, and can create real loyalty too. And there's pros and cons to both, right? But I just think it gives like a business some soul. You know well, what I, I mean? I think it's, uh, I think it's important. I think it's desperately important in today's time. Yeah. Because you, you need to, you need to have a desire to do business with somebody beyond the dollars and cents anymore. You really need to, because the dollars and cents end at Amazon. Yeah, you right. don't want to become a commodity. Yeah, no, you and and you don't want to I, be Walmart think, or Amazon. I think in today's day and age, it's excessively more important to be who you are and show people who you are. And mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to be who you are. Whereas, I'd say 10, 15 years ago, I was very nervous of that. Like, yeah, I was worried about just being myself and saying, "Fuck it, I don't care what anybody thinks." Yeah, um, and I now felt that same way 10 years ago. Yeah, and now it's like I. I, I, I strive for, hey, this is me, and if you don't like me, it's over there, and I'm sure there's someone else that you'll like, yeah. so go find who you like. Um, I, I, if I had a dollar for every time I said, look, I'm, I just want you to be happy, mm -hmm. and if me doesn't work for you, great. Yeah. Find something that does. Well, I mean, like a good example is uh, Ashley coming in with her young daughter. Mm -hmm. Like two ladies, Ashley, Ash Banash. Shout out Ash, shout out a great Washington Whitetail. But yep. she can like walk into the business with her daughter and it's like a warm environment for them to be. You know what I mean? Oh, she gets spoiled by yeah. me though. Which I have, is cool. I have like uh, auto yeah. pops in the freezer upstairs. <laughs> yeah. She always comes running over to me and I pick her up and I carry her up the stairs yeah. and let her pick out her auto pop and bring her back down. Yeah. So a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, it used to scare me too like 10 years ago. Yeah. And um, I don't know if it's like age or maturity or whatever, but I I've never even 
fathom to bringing my dogs to work five years ago. Right. I just didn't even consider it an option. I was like, oh, it's not an option. You know, dogs don't come to work. And then I started doing it a little bit in the last couple of years, and it's like, people love it. Hmm. And the people that don't love it, it doesn't bother them. Sure. You know? Um, and it creates, like, more character, more soul. It's like, I don't know. And it, it's just nice, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I agree. It's uh, It's... If you have control over who comes in your building, especially in that yeah, scenario. that's true. Yeah, right. if yeah. you're Walmart or something, it's not as easy. Yeah, it's a little random different. people walking off the street. But that's part of the joy of you know, being the size that I am. I still have yeah. control over that kind of for the most part, you know. And mm -hmm. I don't know at what point they stop calling you a small business. I have no idea. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, I would say it forever. Oh, I, I would prefer to keep that title as long as it's you know mm -hmm. <laughs> legally possible. <laughs> But um, but regardless, it's it's always been, it's always been about family and having fun. And like I think I've said this before, but the day I decided to buy my dad out when we came to an agreement, I told myself I don't care if I lose every dime I have, I'm going to have fun here, or I'm not going to do it. Because if I didn't want to come here to have fun, I can definitely go make more money doing something else. I'm relatively smart. I'm relatively good at selling stuff. I, I could easily go do something else that would pay way more than what I'm doing. So what's the point if you're not going to have a crap load of fun? So that's been the model of my environment. And there's been some people that don't like it, you know, like we'll be in years past, we'll, we've been, you know, jaw jacking with each other and some of the customers and whatnot that are in there regularly. And then some of the other customers feel like they're not, you know, they're not part of it. So mm -hmm. they almost feel like they're being, ignored or like they don't matter mm -hmm. and that's a hard one because it, it does kind of require the customer to be willing to open up a little bit mm -hmm. right so we can do the same to participate yeah you have to participate you can't just sit there and not participate and then like pout that no one's paying any attention to you you know yeah um and we we've dealt with that once or twice there's been a complaint or two or it felt like they weren't getting any attention or getting ignored and it's like well you're not interjecting into the conversation I mean, mm -hmm. what do you what do you think is going to happen but um, but in general, I, I, I would much rather be in that environment, function in that environment, and I'll keep it going as long as I functionally can until for some reason we can't do it. But I hope that's never. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. I think it's a good thing. For sure. And uh, Yeah. Like I mentioned Wayne and Lisa earlier, it's like a different shop, different atmosphere, but it's still got a similar vibe in that way, mm -hmm. you know, where like it's very homey. Um, Yep. They're both like really accepting, really warm people. Um, but also will like bicker with each other and joke in front of mm -hmm. crowds. And well, they, it's like they it, have a good relationship. Yeah, they have a great relationship. And that's the yeah. reality of it. They mm -hmm. have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. And you could only get away with that if you did. Like if mm -hmm. if you didn't have a healthy balance and a trust in each other, you couldn't do that and manage it. Would never work. Mm -hmm. So and she has the the things in that business that she really enjoys and likes and um, and I know she's all on the keeping everything organized and looking good and whatnot, which is a great benefit. Um, and I think most of the, um, like the apparel and the swag and the, the, you know, candles and scent stuff and all that, all the, all the outdoorsy related things that are in there, I think are, are, are her mostly, you mm -hmm. know, um, but she, they do, they do a great job like that, that shop for the size that it is, is it's amazing how much stuff they have. Packed in there real good and, and a variety of product to pick from. And I mean, I've, I've known them since I was like 18. Like I've known them a long time. They're yeah. really good people. Um, if you're in the, if you're in the Springfield Eugene area and you're not going there, I would like to know why. <laughs> yeah. Like they're really good people. Yeah, they, I think most they people do. They deserve your business. And most people within a pretty good radius do. Yeah. And yeah, they've definitely earned that over the years. Yep. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. And it doesn't hurt that there's a, a uh, guy running around town in bright blue shoes named Cam Haynes. Yes, this is true. I yeah. mean, that's the the a ultimate advertising campaign for your shop because, like, every <laughs> every time he mentions archery, he mentions them, like, yeah. without fail. I mean, what, what business wouldn't sorely benefit from that, yeah. really? Like, I mean, it's huge. Like, Cam Haynes is awesome, and he's brought so much attention um, to the sport and to the lifestyle. Um the uh, the deer hunting trip I just came back from, Brandon had uh, his endure on audiobook, mm. and we we got through most of it. 
Um, this is the first time you. I hadn't. Yeah, I hadn't yeah, gone okay. through it yet. Um, just because I, I, I don't. I haven't done audio books, and I can't sit down and read a book. I don't have that time. Yeah. It's not that I don't want to. I've like I I read. A couple of years ago, I got into like reading for mm-hmm. a bit, and I really enjoyed it. But then I looked at how much time I spent doing it, and I was like, I "Feel like I could have been more productive doing something else." Is that close now? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Just make sure. Yeah. So, great book. Uh, I, I I didn't quite finish it. We ran out of time on our drive, but um, but yeah, really good. And if you're a person that likes podcasts and digests podcasts pretty well, mm-hmm. audio. I think audiobooks are no brainer. Sure. I I always make. The joke, like, if you ever listen to any entrepreneur podcast or, like, smart people podcast, it's like they judge how smart you are by how many books you read per year. Yeah. It's like a academia kind of, I don't know, how many Snobby, books you read, what do you read lately? stuff. Yeah. And there's definitely <laughs> something to it. Like, uh, reading books is a great way to learn and process information. Mm-hmm. But it's not the only way, especially in today's day and age. Like, you can learn yeah. via podcast. You can learn via video. You can learn via rabbit holes on the interwebs. Like you can go read articles, and I mean, we're in the information era. the The world is at your oyster. But I've never processed information very well via reading. I've read some books, but audiobooks are and podcasts. I'm like eternally grateful for. Yeah, I think that there's there's different ways to to process for sure, and reading is. Good and bad for me. Like when I'd read, I'd get it, but then I'd go back and read it again, and I'd be like, "Well, I missed like this, this, and this," you know. So if we keep your brain engaged or whatnot, and nothing's better than being able to throw something in your ear and listen to it while you're doing something else, right? Um, the amount of um, non-music earbud listening that I have is insane anymore. Me too. Yeah. Which I still I love listening to music. I I grew up playing music. Mm-hmm. I I am very passionate about music. I I, I you know previous life i might have been in a band or something like that i just i love music a lot and i don't find myself listening to it nearly as much anymore yeah i'm listening to podcasts way more and i should start listening to audiobooks because that's a yeah. simple way to do it i'm in the stage of life where i'm at the gym listening to a podcast i don't i barely very rarely listen to music mm-hmm. and uh time in the vehicle now feels productive because i can digest stuff through podcast or audiobook for sure. And um Oh yeah, the, the, like I listened to a podcast on the way to the property and another one on the way back. Yeah. I got I got to a point cuz I finally actually caught up on all the Joe Rogans a little while back um that I would try to save at least two mm-hmm. for when I was going to that and I wouldn't listen to it at other times or whatnot. But um but yeah, that's they're great. I love that stuff. Yeah. It give, it doesn't feel as wasted. It feels like you're learning something. It feels productive. It's engaging. It, feel, it feels productive. It feels engaging and you feel like you get to know people. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. You know, in that manner. Yeah. And that's a positive thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, you, we have had a fantastic hunting year. Are, are you pumped on how your hunting years went so far? For the most part, yeah. I've, yeah. Um, there's some, some things I wish I got to that I didn't get to, um, and I still have uh, I still have a valid uh, deer tag in central Idaho that isn't um, completed yet mm. so i might still be hunting in fact um, brandon actually called me today and said next thursday he's thinking about running down again if i want to go mm. um and then just run down hunt through sunday and then come back again just like we did this last time a little bomb run a um, little bomb run but yeah i mean in general i i just killing an elk on my property i could have had a terrible year otherwise and that would have been great mm-hmm. um being the only guy to get an antelope out of my group great you know being the only guy in deer camp that, in Minnesota that actually got a deer. That's true. I forgot about that for a second, yeah. Yeah, nobody nobody did there, you know. And yet the entire time I was seeing less animals. Yeah. And it's just, it's how Doug, it, it Doug frequently. I were laughing about that the other day. Yeah. yeah, it frequently happens to me. Like I, I don't see nearly as much stuff or whatnot, but I end up killing an animal. It's yeah. weird. It's, I, don't, I don't know how to explain that or mm-hmm. um, how, to, how to digest that. But in my last hunt... Um, was mule deer in central Idaho uh, in late season. It's uh, a December season, right? And uh, after I shot my elk, I got back here like a day earlier than I was going this to. This is a hunt you've got some history with too, right? Uh, I, I did it last year. Yeah. I shot Last a, year was your first? Last year was my first oh, okay. trip down there for, for mule deer. My cousin's gone down there several times, and Brandon grew up down there and just hunted that a lot. And knows the area really well. You know, and Poppy lives down there. Pappy. 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 Yeah, Pappy. 
that's where we stay at Pappy's house typically. So, um, but yeah, we went down there Thursday. I think I met Brandon at his house at uh, 11. Went over to my cousin's job site because he we've been picking on him for the last week and a half trying to get him to go because he's so busy building houses. He's like, I'm buried. I don't know what to do. I can't go. There's no way I can get away. What's your cousin's name down there? Justice. Justice, yeah. Yeah. He uh, he, he just... I thought Justice lived home. up here. No, he lives up here. He's going to go with us. We were trying to talk oh, him into going okay, with us. okay. I got you. So yeah. he has a he has a state... He's an Idaho resident. Yeah. He has a statewide tag. He yeah. can go wherever, right? Um, so he can go, and he's still carrying a tag. Yeah. Hasn't even gone deer hunting. Took his daughter deer hunting, and she shot a buck uh, last week. Shout out to Briley. Good job. <laughs> First uh, buck? Uh, no. Oh, no, okay. I think it's her... Fourth, like she shot a mule deer down in uh, down with Pappy. I think that might have been her first buck. Mm. Um, I know she shot one last year and shot one this year. I'm pretty sure she shot one the year before too. I think it might be her fourth. She's a uh, she's big into trap with Freeman. I want to say she was a freshman, and I think she finished in the top five in the state. Um, and that's any age. That's a fun thing to do. Yeah. I, I was just talking with someone so. that today. You ever take out a hand slinger and sling clay pigeons? Uh, it's been a long time. It's fun, dude. Yeah. It's a fun way to spend an afternoon. Oh no, it, it's a gr- it's a great way to spend an afternoon. And I actually I've sponsored Freeman's Trap with the shop like three or four different years. Mm-hmm. Um, but since she got on the team, I, my sponsorship dollars got a little higher. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in any event, um, I met Brandon at his house, and we were I think it was about eleven o'clock. He lives in Coeur d'Alene, and jumped in the rig and drove down. We stopped in um, uh, in at Silver Valley. There, I'm trying to remember. There's a little small town, um, in in there that you drive through one of the little draws and go back up into the hill Wallace. a little bit. It's not Wallace. It's uh, well, no, it's 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 in the town of Wallace, but there's another town. It's mm. I can't remember the name, but it's tiny. There's like 60 people in the town, mm. right? Or it's technically its own town. And Justice's brother, which Justice is my cousin, uh, Simeon. Is he the mayor of that town? Yeah, he's trying to be the mayor of that town. He's uh, a <laughs> Simeon. Sick, dude. Simeon is uh, loves to uh, go go up in the mountains and go. I think he's a. I think he snowboards. I don't think he skis, but it, he's done it his whole life. Skins in backcountry stuff. Yeah, any yeah. any stuff. But um, him and his wife bought a chunk of dirt in there, and they're he's building uh, log cabins. Uh, he's building like three or four of them. So as his kids are older and they've got their own and they want to come and ski and have a place to stay that isn't in his in his cabin Mm -hmm. um and his goal is to become the mayor of that town uh which he will Uh, he's just that guy but we stopped wanted to be a small town mayor actually so we hadn't hadn't seen it yet right didn't didn't know where it was didn't know what what he had built other than he's he's posting on facebook what he's doing right um and so brandon said hey do you want to take an extra 15 minutes and drive by uh Simeon's place and go pee on his fucking cabin. It's like, yeah, I do. Let's go. <laughs> and uh, he was freaking there. So we, we roll in, right? And uh, he's in a, he has a, his camper there. So he's standing in his camper. I guess he had just gotten there, but he was inside putting on his, his cold weather clothes to keep building because he's in the middle of building the first one. And I go up to the door and I beat on it as hard as I can. And he comes out like looking for the cops and jumps out and gives me a big hug. So, but I didn't get a pee on his, the edge of his cabin. <laughs> well, we stopped there on the way through because it was on I ninety. And were you gonna send him a photo or something? Just to yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna I was gonna pee on it. Brandon was gonna send him a video. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> so just marking my territory, cuz <laughs> yeah. see you at Christmas. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, finished on going through. Got uh, got there after dark. Uh, had a good time, hung out, stayed up a little bit, not too terribly late though, and then got up early and loaded up and started driving around, just trying to glass and spot, you know, meal there. And there's not, it's cold, but there's not snow. Like there's very little skiffs where last year when we went down there, there's a decent amount of snow. So the more snow you get, the more downhill they come. So ones that you can't get to start popping up in places you can get to, cause you can only go so far where we're at. Do you remember the kind of the elevation band? Uh, not off the top of my head, no. Yeah, it's not high. too far out of the valley or a little ways out. Uh, you're up a ways. Okay. Yeah, like you're up into seven, getting seven plus probably into the uh yeah. yeah yeah you're getting up into the timber for sure yeah trying to and the, just the roads only go so far and up so high you know depending where where we're at when I mean, there's a bunch of different areas you can go but it's a very similar thing anyway um get out and. Go up uh, three or four different times trying to scout, and there's we start seeing rigs, like a lot of rigs. Um, hmm. I guess one group of people decided. So this is um, 
tag drawing day. Yes. And there's a there's a game office in that town. December one. Yeah, and there's a game office in that town. And there's a line of people outside of it. Mm-hmm. So I think what happened is some out of state people decided to come buy their tags and then go bird hunting. So because there were guys with trucks and bird dogs and whatnot that were popping out midday and mm-hmm. running their dogs all over hell and gone, which is not great for mule deer hunting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think that's why, because we'd never experienced that first. But we were hunting on the same day you could draw yep. your tags or or buy your non-resident tags. Um, in any event, it was kind of a turn into a shit show real early, and we're cruising up uh, this little mountain draw, and we're trying to drop Brandon off at the top of Ridge. He's going to go hunting down one, and then Pappy and I are going to take off, go somewhere else, and then pick him up at the bottom of it. Um, and we come around this corner and there's another skiff of snow across the road, a little bit of white, right? We're cruising along, cruising along, cruising along. And then all of a sudden the tires start spinning out like crazy and Pappy like guns it and the rig starts, stops going forward, starts going backwards. And he just starts screaming, get out, get out, get out. And Brandon bails out of the Jeep. It's an old Jeep Cherokee, real confined. It's very hard for me to get in and out of it because I'm not a small person. Neither is Brandon, but the way the door goes out in the back, you can get your head out pretty quick. So he got out pretty fast. And it all happened. It felt like slow-mo, but it was really pretty quick. Um, I went to open the door, and I saw Brandon, like, coming up out of the out of hitting the dirt, and I didn't want to hit him with it. So I waited a second, and then once it, I cleared him to where I thought I could open it up again, I got ready to open it up, and I felt the ass end go down. I went, nope braced myself, shut my eyes, and just held my breath. And we went over the edge, and the rig slid downhill. Fortunately, only probably 15, 20 feet, and the, um, a couple of smaller pine trees managed to slide under the rig and hook under the rear axle to where it didn't roll. So when it came to a rest, we're, we're driving uphill like this, and it slides and goes down like that and turns like that. I'm on the passenger seat. Right? And these so are I'm, steep mountains. These are steep mountains. This yeah. is not like, a, oh, huh, we came off the road. Huh, huh. This is like a, if those trees didn't catch that axle, we'd mm-hmm. be 300 yards downhill, rolled 20 times, and dead. Pretty much guaranteed. Like It's, it's not something you're walking away from in general. Um, and it, it came to rest and stopped. And like I had my eyes shut, and I felt it not moving. So I opened my eyes and looked, and I'm looking, and I can, like, out my window, I see the path that the car is going to go, or the Jeep's going to go. And it's it might hit one big tree, and it might miss it and go all the way down. And uh, Brandon, at this time, I turned back and looked. I locked eyes with Brandon as we went over the edge, too. Like, he turned and looked at me, and I looked at him and went over. Mm-hmm. And I thought that, my God, this is the last thing I'm going to see. Holy shit. Um, it was, it was pretty freaky, but Brandon jumps down the hill and gets on the opposite side of the Jeep and puts his weight on it, holding it down. Cause the, the driver's side front tires off the ground. It's not touching the ground and the driver's side's on the uphill side. So it gets situated there and we just kind of look at each other. Nobody's moving. It's like a movie where you're on the edge of a, of going over <laughs> a road, right? And I, I I look at I look at Pappy and I look at Brandon. I go, should I should I open my door? Like just just do it slow and be careful. Slowly open the door. It doesn't go. And I'm like, do I get out? I'm like, yeah, just try to do it slow. And then it, once you clear, just bail out of the way just to make sure. So I I stick my feet out the door and it's downhill. Like I jump out and I'm jumping down like six feet. It's steep. Wow. Right. And I jump out of the rig and then bomb off to the side just in case the rig starts to roll and because it would land on me because I'm on the downhill side. And then I, and it's slick as shit. I, I stumble my way up. And mind you, it's just frozen hard ground. It's not like compact snow, but it was super slippery. Um, get up to the uphill side and then I put my, I grab the roof rack and put my weight back and lean back on it. And Pappy works his way out of the Jeep. And then once Pappy's clear of the Jeep, um, Brandon goes downhill while I'm hanging on to it and tries to find a log and crams it into the front quarter panel to hopefully stop the rig from rolling. And where we are, we can get like one bar of service so we can make phone calls, but people are having a hard time hearing you. And we're about four miles of a walk back to where a non heavy duty four wheel drive rig can get to. So, and we don't know if we're going to be able to get a record to come up the hill or what's going to happen. So while I'm holding my weight on it, Brandon bravely goes in and pulls out the shit that we need to keep being able to go 
So he, my pack's in the back, his pack's in the back. It's all wedged, and it's we can't open the back part of it, right? So he's, like, going in the passenger door and trying not to touch anything and pick up and toss it out the way, toss it out the way and get our bows out, get our bags out, um, close all the doors, um, had to start the Jeep to roll up the window because Pappy's window was down, um, closed it all up and put on all our stuff, and it's cold. It's 10 degrees, 15 degrees. Put on all our gear and start walking. The uh, The section of road that we hit, which it had a light little skiff of snow on it, so you couldn't see anything. It was just white. Um, it was a spring that was uphill from there that had, was still pouring water out, and over several days it had made a sheet of ice that looked like you put a Zamboni on it. Like it was perfectly smooth, perfectly clean. I've got videos on my phone of us trying to get this thing out, and Brandon was trying to rope a rope around uphill on a tree to tie off to the roof rack so when they start winching it out, it doesn't roll and hold the top in. And he immediately hits his ass and slides downhill 20 feet because he can't stand on it. It's that Damn. slick. And we made it when we were six feet away from hitting dirt again. Mm, you almost we it. almost made it across. But it. then what happens when you come back down? Well, so if you as long as you don't hit the brakes, yeah. Right, You're and not skidding out. if once we had realized what it was, we would have chained up, and then it'd have been fine because we had chains with us. But all the chains, all the straps, all the gear is on top of the roof rack, mm -hmm. and it's tipping downhill. So it's like I'm not getting up there. Like that's that's gonna put weight on a spot where it's gonna want to roll. Mm -hmm. So we hike our way out and get about halfway, and uh, a guy's pulling up the road in a Tacoma, little little uh, extended cab, manual tranny, mm -hmm. older Tacoma. It's like, hey, bro, you don't want to go up there. We just took a Jeep off the side of the mountain. And uh, he he goes, is there a place to turn around? He's like, yeah, you go up, but, you know, maybe a quarter mile max. There's a decent turnaround spot. He's like, you guys want to ride out? It's like, yeah, we would definitely gladly take a ride out. So he goes up the hill where we keep walking. He turns around, comes back and gets us and drives us back down. When we had one bar of service, we kept trying to call the local wrecker that Pappy knows. He, he wasn't picking up his phone. Pappy called another buddy who was gonna who was there who was up working, but he was about done. So, he, but he was up way up on the mountain. So it's gonna take him a long time to get back to try to help us get the rig out because he had a winch. And for one reason or another, Pappy never got around to putting a winch on the jeep. Um, kind of regretted it that day, but at the same time, I don't know if we'd have gotten out with it. And there's probably a much higher likelihood that we would rolled it, wrong. Yeah. rolled it trying to get it out because we're not we're not experts, right? Mm -hmm. But in any event. Uh, we did get a hold of Pappy's new son-in-law, who's a, a rancher down there and runs a bunch of cattle and, and uh, grows uh, hay and shit. Uh, and he drove up and met us where the other guy had dro drove us down to, and he drove us back to Pappy's house, waited for the wrecker, eventually got the wrecker on the phone once we got back into service, because there was about a four-mile stretch where there was no service. So once we left that spot where we had like one bar, you weren't calling somebody for you know, an hour at least. So called the wrecker. Wrecker ended up meeting us at the house. We ate some food just because who knows how long this is going to be. We might be up here till well after dark trying to get the Jeep out. Um, and then they talk it out, and this guy's all gung-ho. He's like, well, let's get our asses up there before it gets later. So he jumps in the truck. Pappy jumps in another rig because he's got a couple of trucks. And the wrecker starts following Pappy up. Brandon and I jump into Brandon's rig, drive down to town, get four bags of rock salt and four bags of sand and some other stuff in case we have to try to start a fire up there and try to warm up and drive all the way up there. And by the time we get up there, they've already driven up, look at it, come back down. Pappy's got chains on his Ram and they're putting chains on the, uh, on the wrecker, which is a, a dually for older Ford diesel. And they both back their asses all the way up to where we were dang near close. And, uh, the wrecker had wedges underneath the tires. He uh, he had chains on all four. Uh, puts the snatch block up on the hill. I climb up the hill. It's steep and slippery, but I climb up there, and he throws all the stuff up to me, and I rig it all up, and they're trying to get the Jeep situated. They tie a rope off to the roof rack, and Brandon goes uphill to a tree and loops the rope around it so he can keep tension on it. So if it starts to – it won't roll over as we're trying to roll, pull it out because the angle that it's at, as soon as we pull it off the trees that it hit, it could probably roll over. So, and he starts getting situated, get everything rolling. He starts winching it up. I have like five or six different 30 second videos of it that I was recording of all this happening uh, since I was uphill. 
and he got the Jeep out about halfway and the whole ass end of the, of the wrecker slid over to the hill. So he had to run another winch line downhill, winch off to a tree to force his rig to stay straight. Well, the winch line that went up the hill that's pulling the Jeep back up was pulling, but actually pulled the Jeep out. Like we had to start it and Pappy was turning the wheels to try to guide it up the hill as it came out and got it pointed downhill uh, in back in the road. Uh, put everything away, and Pappy stayed right on the wrecker's butt until we got back to dirt because uh, it didn't have ch the chains on it. And um, I drove Pappy's truck. Brandon drove his truck. The wrecker drove his truck, and Pappy drove his Jeep, and we drove all the way back down. Whole caravan. A uh, whole caravan, and uh, just lucky as hell, man. I mean, the whole time, like, when right after it happened, Pappy was so mad at himself because he was like, oh, my God, I almost killed my boys. And I'm like, hold on a second, dude. Let's think about this for a second. Let's look at what happened here. One, any one of us driving this would have done the exact same thing. So this has nothing to do with what you did at all. Like this is this is just a bad thing. Situation. No matter what happened, unless you were chained up here, which there's no reason to be chained up because it was like bare dirt for the most part of most mm -hmm. of what we went through, right? There's only little tiny spots of snow. Anybody with any sense probably wouldn't have chains on at that point. And you couldn't have seen it because it was covered with with snow. Like, you, you couldn't see the ice at all. And any one of us would have done that, and we, the exact same thing would have happened. And let's think about this for a second. The Jeep didn't roll. Everyone's okay. And we should probably be dead. Like, we're the most fortunate people up here, hands down. Like, yes, this is a sh shitty situation, but the best possible outcome from this situation happened. Like, I'm immensely grateful, like immensely grateful. And he called, talked to, talked to his wife and she, uh, she told him and he, he told me we were winching it out. She's like, yeah, she told me your, uh, your dad saved us. And that got me a little bit. He was watching out, mm. you know, but, uh, cause Pappy's name's Mark and my dad's mm. name is Mark, you know, and Pappy kind of stepped in as my surrogate dad after my dad died, um, and that was that that got me a little bit, but it was weird. Like you look at the whole thing and you go, Yeah, that shouldn't happen. Like we should have tumbled and we didn't. And I I I, I can't express my gratitude. One living through that obviously makes you like stop for a minute and start looking and be a little more appreciative of the things around you and grateful for every day and that kind of stuff. But it um it still feels weird. Like it was it was what today's Wednesday. It was six days ago. Yeah, I bet there's a there's five like a hangover ago. from those experiences. Yeah, yeah, it was just bizarre, and he kept he kept getting mad at himself. I'm like, Pappy, we're so fucking lucky. Like, and any one thing that you did in there could have done the wrong thing and made it worse. Like, if anything, you did everything right because the the rig didn't roll. Brandon got out, and we got the Jeep out, and it's still driving. Like, there's nothing broken. There's nothing mm -hmm. bent. There's nothing nada, right? Um, and consequently, the next day, was it or the day after that, uh, Brandon went a different way than uh, Pappy and I did that the next morning, and he actually found some elk because Brandon has an elk tag for down there mm. uh, and found some deer. He was just a little too late getting to the spot for where it was, and it started dumping snow up high. So we have this grand plan that the next morning, okay, we're going to go back to where Brandon was, but we're going to get there way earlier and hope we can catch some fresh tracks and take off and chase them, right? So we're in the Jeep again, and we drive all the way up to the top, come around the hill to where it starts going downhill, and this is like the about almost as high as you can get up there. Um, and Pappy goes, okay, we're going to do a brake check, make sure we have traction. Slams on the brakes, Jeep dies. Middle of the road. No, first people up the hill, like there's, then it's a road to go to a, the mine, right? So people would typically travel it, but it's a, uh, it's a, it's Sunday now, mm -hmm. right? So you know, not two people typically not working, but um, no one's coming. <laughs> there's a foot of snow easily and the thing just dies. And now the Jeep has overheated a few times, but it's 10 degrees outside. So there's no reason for it to overheat. And so then we're like, okay, what really happened when this thing slid off the road? trying to figure out it took us a half hour to 40 minutes to get it started again 
But we got it started, and Brandon and I were both sitting in the truck because it. Pappy kept trying to start. We're like, just dude, cranking just cranking it over, or? cranking it over, or messing with something. So, he, like, okay, I'm gonna turn it on. Tell me if you hear the fuel pump kick on, right? Oh fuck, I don't hear it. All right, so now we think the fuel pump's bad. So we get out and we got a shovel on the roof rack and start pounding the side of the fuel tank. See if you, can, if you know, if there's a loose connection or something, maybe it'll kick on. Go to try to start it again. Nothing happens. And like, okay, stop trying to start the rig. We're gonna wait ten whole minutes. Just let it sit here, and then try to start it again. And then that didn't work. So uh, the hood's up the whole time. Pappy gets out. Brandon goes to try to start the rig, and Pappy starts, like, messing with the ignition wire and whatnot, and it fires up. So something got pinched or whatnot when we slid off, and it was a getting a bad, yeah. little electrical bad connection. And while we were sitting there for that 10 minutes, because Pappy kept wanting to grab the keys, we're like, you touch those fucking keys, I'm going to throw them out of the car. <laughs> just wait. Give it 10 minutes, for God's sakes. Mm -hmm. he's, just, he's always twitchy. But um, said, okay, so if this car starts, we are turning around and going home. Right now, we are not, because we're at the last place you'd get a phone call out. And we wanted to go like another four miles into a foot of snow where no one's going that day. Like, there's no functional reason for anybody to go up there unless they're hunting too. All right. So we ended up driving back to town, past like three rigs going up the hill, driving back, like, God damn it. Got up way more than early enough. We were probably 45 minutes earlier than mm. we needed to be just to make sure that we're up here and we're ready for as first daylight so we can look for tracks and take off after them before somebody else does. In any event, drove back down to the house and then got close to close to home and glassed around a little bit more trying to find some mule deer. And then we're, we give up. We're driving back down out of the, out of the mountains and we're a quarter mile from the house and one of the two bucks that Pappy had spotted the week before standing in a dude's yard looking at us. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> God. But uh, so all in all, it was a completely uh, a failure of a, a hunt, but um, I don't know if I've ever experienced so much uh, emotion um, over, over a weekend too, right? You know, just really, really incredible and I, I can't, honestly say enough how grateful i am that i'm okay and everybody's okay and nobody Scratch got hurt free. yeah yeah um just really <clears> lucky <throat> and it and that could have happened to anybody and it's not like and it's not like it's anywhere that anyone's maintaining right so no one's going to put up a warning sign you know and the funny part we um we slid the jeep off and we're standing around just kind of looking at everything like what the fuck did we do before we hiked out of there and you look up the road, and there is two cans, empty cans that are crushed, sitting in the middle of the road. Kind of looks like somebody had a little campfire right there, right? And then I think they were like, you know, seltzers or something, right? Empty seltzer cans. And as we're walking out, we pass a glove laying in the road. And then get a little farther down, and there's a crushed up pack of marbles empty. And there's footprints all the way down. Somebody else slid a fucking rig off there and was walking out in the same spot. That's the only thing that makes any sense. Right. Because it's like, this is clearly somebody who walked down the road from here, stayed there for a minute, right? Because they started a fire and had a couple of cans and just, what the hell? Like, it was crazy. Just wild. Like, it's... It's very you, scary, man. I... It's a testament to how dangerous a lot of what we do really is. Yeah. And we just don't think about it because it feels normal because you're doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. But it, at any moment, um, you could do something wrong. Right. And we're just think about just you're cruising along on a mountain road and you blow a tire on the left side and the car turns left. You're not going to be able to stop that. And down the hill you go. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it can happen. And it's, and it's just a, just another opportunity to appreciate every day and be aware of how fragile life is and how quickly it can be gone and what really is important to you and what to appreciate. It just really is. And I'm eternally grateful to still be here. And ironically, I get home and the first thing I get to do is have dinner with my kids. And I was really grateful for that. Um, just a crazy experience and it's not going to stop me from doing it at all and if i can get away next week thursday and brandon's still going i'm probably gonna jump in the truck with brandon and go down and try to shoot a mule deer again so um it's uh and it is in no way pappy's fault i know pappy listens so pappy yeah. it's not your fault <laughs> stop blaming yourself you did it you, you saved us if anything yeah we love you 
Stop. Do your kids <laughs> understand the extent of the situation, do you think, or no? Probably not. I don't think they fully digested the fact no. that dad could have died the other I don't, day. I and, think it's hard to digest unless you've spent time in mountains like that. Yeah. And that's why when you said you slid off, I immediately, like, my stomach was like, what, hearts in your stomach kind of feeling, because... I know what those mountains look like, and I've always had a little fear of, like, man, people really billy goat around those things. Yeah, last like, year. to travel those mountains, you're yeah. billy goating around, and there's a reason that dude is driving a Tacoma. Like, there's a reason Pappy drives a Jeep, and yeah. they're all absolutely as ready as they can be to drive those mountains because you have to be. Yeah. And they're used to it because that's what they're used to, but, I mean, you're right. Like, around most corners, there's... A spot if you slipped off of it would be really really bad. Last year when we when we went down there, um, we had there was a decent amount of snow, so it was you drive the main roads to where you pull off, and then you chain up and you go up the mountain, right? And the first day or day and a half, I was terrified. Like, what are you guys doing? Like, where are we going? <laughs> How are you driving this thing through here? And then by like day and a half. And I'm just like, oh, okay, this is normal. Mm -hmm. I don't need to worry about this. And then we're there for like three hours or two hours of the morning and slide a Jeep off the side of a mountain. I'm like, okay, maybe I should have been worried about this. Maybe this isn't normal. <laughs> but um, but no, it's just a, a bad fluke. And now that's Brandon and I, as we were coming back from the Jeep not running and getting it started, like we just shouldn't be hunting in the same vehicle together because he was in the he was in the rig when I rolled the general. Mm. And he was in the rig when we about slid the Jeep off the mountain. And, God, there was something else. There was another one. Like, we've had three different occurrences where we were both in the rig and something bad happened. Like, And then we get to drive home in a snowstorm, <laughs> like six-hour drive up and over a couple passes. Like, whew, I don't know, just close your eyes and hope you're going to be all right. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, a lot of people – that make it to later stages of life that have lived a rich life, like have a f one or two or three or four or five of those stories. Yeah. And it's just like a minute to step back and say, I'm just grateful to be here and appreciate. Yeah. Appreciate and live every day. Like is your last is like a, a nice thing to say, but it, it's true. Like, you know, tomorrow's never promised. This is true. Um, yeah. It's can, it can be gone in a second. And it can be gone when you least expect it. So you yeah. can't you can't plan for it. You can't prepare for it. So don't waste a minute. Don't waste a second. Enjoy it. Yeah, that's all you got. It's pretty scary. Very, uh, very real, man. Um, glad you guys all walked away from it uh, with nothing but a scarred uh, memory. You know. Well, in all fairness, Brandon actually probably got it the worst because he dove out onto a sheet of ice and. Got his wrist pretty good, and his his leg still hurts a lot. Mm. Like he thought it was just a bad Charlie horse, and he got dinged up. He's contem contemplating going to the doctor because he's like, "Dude, it still hurts." Like, like my wrist feels better, but dude, my, my I just talked to him like four hours ago. It's like, God, my hip hurts so bad. I don't know what what's going on. Mm. Um, and he was the one who, if it rolled, he would have made it. What did he say? He's like, "Somebody's got to survive this to take the bodies out." <laughs> like, thanks, dude. <laughs> like, is it too soon? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I just it's it, it is what it is, man. I made it and I'm alive and uh and nobody got hurt to boot, not drastically hurt. Brandon's still kinda hurt, but not bad. Yeah. So much it could have been so oh, 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 much worse. Oh man. Yeah. Thank, thankful for every moment. Yeah, wild times. Um I think it's it's cool that you're willing to share that kind of stuff. Um because when you're, I don't know, I guess when you're on this side of the camera, you know, you have to pick and choose what you're willing to share. And you certainly don't have to share everything. But um, being w willing to share stories like that, I think, is uh, people will appreciate it. There's, I think people appreciate it. Well, I, I like to think that, and I've had several people tell me, you know, maybe you don't want to, maybe you don't want to go too far with any of this stuff you know or don't just keep that to yourself that kind of thing i'm like you know i don't i don't care what people think so it doesn't really matter to me what what someone's going to think of a situation or whatnot but at the same time i if 
some of the stuff we started talking about early in this that was very emotional for me. I um I told myself if one person, you know, does something different, you know, or the like the first podcast I did with Dan where he made me talk about my dad. Um, I thought about it a lot and was just like, you know, if if me being this open and this honest and this vulnerable make somebody do something different or make somebody think twice about what they're doing or makes them appreciate the moments that they have just a little bit more, I'd be selfish if I didn't share it. Because I'm not ashamed of it. And I'm not scared of it. And once again, I don't really care what people think. So I kind of feel like it's my it's a bit of my duty to share as much of it as I can, to be honest. Yeah, it's a good example of um, using the internet for good. You know, I think people are quick to like, say oh the bad things that come from the internet but there's a lot of good things too oh, you gosh, know yeah. and um it's just a tool you know all of these things are tools choose to use them and digest what you digest wisely but um yeah i think it's an example of you know a, a net positive from being able to uh two guys can sit in a, a living room with a camera and uh <laughs> record a podcast in 2023 it's pretty cool and share stuff like this so yeah, it's still such an interesting concept to me. It's weird. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, like, it's we weird. just have a we just have a my uh, my <laughs> yeah. my uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank. My Sony. Yeah, sitting here running and a the little audio board and a couple of microphones and I'm like, we're just sitting in my, in my man cave that I've been <laughs> yeah. in most of my life. I'm like, what's the this is interesting. Yeah, you know it. It feels real to me now because of the audience uh, that we reach across many platforms. But there was a long time where, where it doesn't. Because when you look behind the camera, there's not, who do you see staring at you, you know? Yeah. Nobody's there. For the most part, it just feels like I'm having a conversation with you and kind yeah. of telling a story about it. Which dogs. is, I think that's part of why we avoid trying to talk about what happened and anything until we sit down. So it still feels fresh and you can still get a bit of a reaction. But I told you all about this and you're like, are you sure you want to talk about it? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. I'll talk about it. Yeah, and you you pretty well shared the the full story, most of the Cliff Notes version with me, but it didn't feel. I mean, I understood the depth of it because I've spent time in similar mountains, but not the details that you just shared, like, you know, carefully exiting the vehicle, um, you know, choosing where to have your weight in the vehicle, uh, so it didn't roll. Like that just that just describes how severe that situation was. Oh yeah. Like yeah. I, the whole time being really cautious about it. In hindsight, it probably didn't matter because the trees I think were holding it, because the way it was sitting and the amount of weight that was sitting on it, it didn't make sense that it didn't mm -hmm. roll until we pulled it up the hill and saw the trees that were tucked underneath it that had grabbed it. Yeah, that held it there. But yeah, tire off the ground. Like yeah. it's like it's one of them teeter totter things like you see in a movie where a bird comes and lands on the hood and the whole <laughs> car goes over. Just like, oh my God. It was just, it was just like that. It was mm -hmm. freaky. Like it, I still don't, I still don't fully get it all, you know. Like I keep looking back on it and thinking about it. And it'll be one of those flashbacks you won't be able to erase. Yeah, it'll definitely be a moment in my life that I will always remember. Yeah, like one of those bur burned in type things. Well, it's it's all those instances, you know. It's the the hardships in your life, the scary moments in your life. They're great opportunities massively great opportunities to look where you're at be fortunate for what you have be grateful for the experiences that you have in your life and uh, reassess what's important to you mm -hmm. and the whole way hiking out of there that's all i was thinking about mm -hmm. and being so fucking grateful like so grateful mm -hmm. like you can look at that situation and look at the bad part of it but jesus nobody got hurt the rig got out okay i mean what do you want like mm -hmm. we're so lucky like, I felt like I should go buy a lottery ticket. I was felt like I was so lucky. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good perspective. You know, it's a, it's a moment to really reflect on what's important, how you're spending your time, yeah. who you're spending it with, and yeah. uh, how you're living, you know, because we get to make a lot of choices. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> wild man what you're doing how you're spending your time and who you're spending it with and it's all it's all in our control for the most part yeah 
and some people it's not. And, um, you know, I think about being grateful for that. Like mm-hmm. there are people who live in situations where, you know, they they have a lot of bad situations that are out of their control. Yeah. Well, so it, it would have been a very easy, like over my past, what, three years probably to have taken my life in a very different way and having a lot of, lot of negative things happen to allow you to look at it in a really poor way and be bitter and sour and angry and mad and whatnot. And man, every one of those things made my life so much better and made my outlook on things and my, and my appreciation so much greater that now I really look forward to those because like everything feels so much better all of a sudden again, as long as I don't die in the process. Um, I, I want it. I yeah. really do. Even if it's terrifying, even if it's scary, I want I want the the hard times, I want the adversity, I want the challenge, I want the 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 pain because the the good after it is so much better. And that's just that's just a a reality of life. Like don't run from the things that hurt you. Don't run from the things that cause you pain. Don't run from the adversity. Getting through those things makes the everything else ten times better. And the people that just hide in a hole or hide in a corner from it and don't face it, your life is miserable in comparison. Look forward to it. Appreciate it. And realize it's an opportunity to change and do something different and look at something different and be a more positive human being and look at the great Mm -hmm. and the good. Because there's so much of it when you start looking for it. It's just people don't look for it. Mm -hmm. Look for the good. Look for the positive. It's, It's such... A life-changing thing. I can't emphasize it enough. I've had so many conversations with younger men growing up and trying to get them to see their life a little different or see the things around them a little differently because it's such a healthier, way better way to live that so many people get stuck avoiding or not appreciating or understanding. And just life is great, and it, but it is what you make it. Mm-hmm. It is what you make it, yeah. Yeah, it is what you make it. Um, this is a less heavy example of that, but the first winter I spent down south, and I, mm-hmm. I did an internship in Palm Desert, and every day is like like the Truman Show. Like the sun comes out, it's beautiful, um, 85 degrees. You know, it's like every day is an instant replay of that. Mm-hmm. And I remember having a day off and going to the pool on the weekend it's like 90 degrees and sunny and no one was there. Yep. And I was like, why? You know? <laughs> and then it hit me. It was like, oh, no one cares because every day is like this. Exactly. So, yeah, winter will help you appreciate the summer and mm-hmm. the inverse and so on and so forth. And like mm-hmm. you mentioned, pain will help you appreciate the the good times. and Losing a loved one will make you appreciate how much your loved ones mean to you. Yeah. Um, you know, losing... A financial place in your life will make you appreciate how important it is to get there. You know, there's just there's always, always stuff around you. Yeah, and, and you always, go, always a silver lining. Yeah, there's the silver lining. Silver linings is a real, real thing. And if there's one thing that I think I, I've really almost mastered is I've always seen it almost immediately. The older I've gotten, like when I was younger, um, you know, the the lecture that. Rick Giles gave me, I, I think I've talked about that on here before, the every day you wake up, you have a choice. You have a choice of whether today is going to be a good day or a bad day, and nobody makes that choice but you. When that clicked in my head, I literally just started seeing everything different. Everything before that, I was irritated, angry, pissed off, frustrated. Nothing was ever, I was never happy about anything. I was always frustrated. And then all of a sudden, I was just like, oh, my God, look at all these great things around me that mm-hmm. I've just been not even looking at because I've been focused on the one yeah. thing that's pissing me off. And it's just it's just such a better way to live, and I'm eternally grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah, man, a lot to be grateful for. Um, you know, a lot to be grateful for, fresh air, healthy legs to walk on. I think about that sometimes when I'm in the woods, like, you know, there are people that would kill to be able to exercise. Yeah. Because they can. They yeah. physically can't. 
Yeah, there'd be people that'd be killed to have thick legs like that. Yeah, I'm freaking stuck. Look at that. That's one of my jeans. Not dude. too many guys would kill to have Lulu pants, though. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, guys, this is uh, the last podcast of the year. Yes, sir. Last podcast of the year, last of 2023. Um, grateful for you guys. It's been it's been a good start to this thing. I'm happy with how it's going. Me too. Yeah. I've, I've uh. I've enjoyed this more than I expected to. I, I thought it would be a good outlet and a good place to bring stuff up and get it out instead of trying to like make a YouTube video about every little thing. But it's 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 shifted a lot different than what I thought we, what we were starting to do here in a lot better way. Um, and nobody thinks they're, they're <laughs> somebody listening to them talk is going to mm. be like useful or anything like that. But because at, at the end of the day, I, I honestly just want to help people and make a difference. Um, and hopefully uh, listening to this helps fill your day a little bit, brings you a little bit of joy. Hopefully maybe you learn something. And for me, I, I hope you appreciate something a little more in your life that maybe you weren't. Because um, that's been the, the trick to my life that's changed me more than anything is being able to see the good things that we frequently don't look for. Um, that, that's that been the biggest change in my life for me, and I hope I can pass that to you, yeah. all of you. I think there's a lot of maturity in those words. Um, so we're signing off for the holidays. Uh, I hope you get to spend time around the people you enjoy, and um, we appreciate you guys. And, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a wrap on the year, huh? It's 2023, right? Yeah. Going out with a bang. We're taking the year off. But did you die? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm out. I didn't even intend to end it that way, but I thought that was a good way to end it. Yeah, no, but did you die? <laughs> <laughs>